Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV, and we're going to talk about global variables. So these are variables that we can use between different functions, and this is really useful in like C programs. And so since Objective-C is based on C, you get access to this as well. Now, I wouldn't recommend using this a whole lot, but it's a good thing to know when you're reading other people's code so that you can sort of understand what's going on. So if we just take a look real quick, I've got two functions and stack frames here that are doing two different things. So one will, uh, one wants to add total plus one and set that back to total, and the other one wants to reset total. So when we're working with an iPhone app, we want to be able to store data and modify it and have different sort of chunks of code working on the same data. And global variables are one way you could do that in your apps, but it's not recommended. In order to create a global variable, we'll insert int total is equal to 10 at the file scope. And so this means that it's outside of any function definition. So we're gonna jump over to Xcode, type up this example so you can sort of see what's going on. And then I'll, I'll talk a little bit about a new keyword called static. We saw that in an earlier video and we're gonna see it again. It's gonna do something different. Gonna create a new project. And we're gonna select OSX application, command line tool, and then hit next. From here, I'll type in a variable, uh, a name for our thing. So I'll call this globals or global variables. Hopefully I haven't chosen that one before and we'll save it. Looks like I have, so we'll just replace it. And now we can select main.m. In here, we'll delete the boilerplate code. And on the very top, we're gonna to insert our code. So to create a, a global variable, we'll do it at the top. And this is considered file scope. So int total is equal to 10. A global variable can be assigned its value uh, up here outside of a, a function. And so I'll just write a comment here. And what we want to do is we want to be able to modify this value between different functions. So if I wrote some functions to sort of help do some logic in my iPhone app, I want to reference the same data. And so this is one of the ways that we can do it. In here, I'll say total is equal to zero. So this is resetting it. And then I'll create a new method or function. And we'll call this update total. And here we'll say total is equal to total plus one. All right, so now that we have that, we'll go to our main method at the bottom and we can make a function call. So we could say reset total and I can use the arrow keys to go up and down and then press enter. And then I could say update total. Now I won't be able to see anything uh, unless I either insert a breakpoint or if I don't want a breakpoint, I can drag that off. Or I could print something out. So we can print out what the total is using NS log. It might be quicker to just use the breakpoint than to print stuff out, but some people find this is easier to understand and follow. Since it's a, a global variable, it exists in this scope, which is between these braces exist between this scope and this scope. So it's in all of the methods in here. And I go ahead and copy this, paste it, and paste it here. So we've got it printing out in three different spots. We should see 10, and then it should reset to zero, and then it should be one. So let's see if that's right. And we have a typo, so this is common. It tells me there's an implicit declaration of a function update total with a capital O or zero, so I can just fix that and then hit the play button. And if we look at our print statements, we see 10, zero, one. So that's what we'd expect. Uh, the alternative approach that I showed was inserting a breakpoint. So if we run this, we'll see that total is equal to 10. And then if I step over this, we see now it's zero. 
and then we step again and it is one. So this is a global variable. We can modify it and it's pretty handy. Now, one of the things that you have to be careful with is you can actually have a local variable that is only defined in the scope between these curly braces. So when I say scope, that means it only exists in this region. And I could create my own total variable and I could assign it to some other value. So I could say it's 20. Now, the issue that we'd have here is we'd have two different totals. So if I go ahead and run this, what we see is total is equal to 20 here. And we see the L for a local variable. And I step over and we see it prints out 20. Then I hit step over again and again, and it just keeps saying 20. So it finishes and we have 20, 20, 20, which is not what we expect. So this variable doesn't change when this function is called because the function is dealing with the global variable. So if I stop and run this again and we step once, or I hit the play button, it'll jump to the next breakpoint. And here we can see we have a global variable with the V total, and that's assigned 10. And we step over, and then we're back to our function scope, which doesn't have that. So we'll step over again. And if I step into update total, we're up here. Now you can see our stack frame on the left, we have main and update total. And we have two different variables. So here we have total, which is a global variable because we're inside the function. We're in the update total. So it's the global variable. But when I switch the main stack frame, this is the local variable total, which is set to 20. So this is where you can get bugs when you're working with global variables and local variables. And it all depends on where they're declared. So if it's declared at the file scope, which means it's outside of your methods or functions. So these are your methods. So if you're outside that, it's going to be global. If you're inside, it's going to be local. All right, so that is that. Now I want to show you uh, the static keyword. So a global variable is good, but you can run into issues when you're working with open source projects or you're working with other people's code or you're trying to share your project with someone else and they're trying to use your code. And the problem is a global variable this variable creates a symbol that's going to exist at the global scope, which can conflict with other code files. So right now we only have one code file, but imagine having hundreds of code files. If every code file created a global variable for something and called it total, there would be a conflict between all those files. So let's see if we can see that in action. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to go to other, empty, hit next. So just choose other, empty, next. And we'll just call this other, dot m. Hit create. And in here, I could create a global variable. Int total is equal to 2000. And then I hit play. And we see an issue. Up top, it says build failed. And there's a asterisk. Normally, it would make this pop up, but it didn't. And we see this nasty looking error. It says apple mock o linker id error linker command failed with exit code 1. So an exit code uh, of 1 means there's an issue. And what we're seeing here is there's a duplicate symbol for architecture x86-64. Wow, that is something you probably don't understand. So don't worry about that. The, the important part is the duplicate symbol. So when the computer's trying to sort of figure out how to put your program together and you have multiple code files, it needs to basically create a table of contents for all of the different uh, variables and functions. And when it's doing that and it runs into an issue where two different code files have a global variable or a global sort of function, 
you run this issue where it doesn't know what the difference is, and so it causes an issue. And so this can be an ugly thing to sort of solve, um, especially because it doesn't really give us a line of code. Uh, we have to actually dig through this nasty-looking piece of output, and we see there's duplicate symbol underscore total. Now, I didn't, I didn't name it underscore total, but the compiler or Xcode is doing something under the hood, so it's not exactly what I wrote, but it's similar, and this gives me my first clue that makes me look and say, oh, I have a, a global variable that's causing an issue with some other file. And in this case, it's probably better not to create a global variable if you don't want to share the code between different files. And if you did, you want to pick a name that's more unique so that you don't have clashes like this. Um, so the workaround for this is to use a static global variable. So I can say static in total. And static in this situation when we're in the file scope will create a, a variable that's global within this piece of uh, this code file so that it doesn't conflict with other global variables of the same name and uh, our code will run. We can remove the breakpoint and just hit the run button and everything works just fine. So that's the issue you run with global variables. And so generally you want to use the static keyword. So I'll just put that back to what it was. So you can see the difference. All right, so that's gonna conflict with the other variable. Now, if I wanted to use total over here, uh, I would have to say something like extern int total. And this is telling the compiler that there's a variable in another file. So there's a variable in another file that you should use I'll come out, out this top line. And if we come back to main.m, we want to switch off from the static. Because if I run it right now, um, nothing's trying to use this variable. So there's no issues. But there would be an issue if that code file was trying to do something. So let's make it int total. And I'll go ahead and hit run now other uh, has access to this so there could be a, a method in here called void do something and it could say total is equal to total times a thousand so it could do something like that and then uh, anyone who needs to do something with it would be able to to run this code um, so one way to quickly show how that works is in here we'd need to say, well, actually, I won't do that. I'll just call it. And so this will actually create a warning, um, but it's okay. So do something. It won't give us autocomplete uh, in this case, and it will give us a, a warning flag saying that's an implicit declaration. And I'll go ahead and run. And you see do something ran, but uh, we don't see the output because we have the local variable. So let's run that again. And we see the value 10 times 1,000, which is 10,000. So do something actually did run. If I want to make that warning go away, I need to say extern uh, do something. Sorry, it's void do something like that. And I hit the run button. The warning goes away. Extern just means that there's another file that's going to declare a method called do something. So this just needs to match whatever we're saying there. All right, so that's probably more than you want to know about global variables and static variables. Um, but this is sort of a starting point, and you can play around with it a little bit. We won't really use this in an iPhone app, but if you're reading someone else's code, they're sometimes going to use a global variable. And so this is a, a helpful way to sort of understand what they're doing.